March the 15th, 2018, and I'm Victor Schoenbank, and I have the great pleasure of sitting with John Anderson, Professor Emeritus from the Department of Nutrition at the University of North Carolina, the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill Gilling School of Global Public Health. And so I really appreciate you taking this time with me today. You're welcome, Vic. That's a mouthful, the name of our school. <laughs> well, <laughs> when we came here, it was simply the School of Public Health. And it's a, a very nice dedication to uh, a great donor, Dennis, mm -hmm. Dennis Gillings, who was a faculty member when I first came here. Uh huh. In, uh, in biostatistics. I remember. Mm -hmm. I remember being in meetings with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'll, I'd like to start by asking you about your your parents. Where did you come oh, from? Oh, okay. Uh, I I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. My parents were both Canadian. They migrated to Cleveland uh, during a uh, economic recession in Canada during the 1920s. And uh, they came and settled in Cleveland, and uh, I have a brother, an older brother, uh, and, and uh, we were both born in Cleveland. Uh, we grew up there, went to public schools, and then for my last two years of high school, I went to university school, which is a private uh, school in Shaker Heights, Ohio, and the upper school has now moved out to Hunting Valley, uh, Ohio, outside of Cleveland, a little further. So I had a good education, mm -hmm. and uh, the public schools I went to, Brush High School especially, was pretty good, but university school was really excellent, and uh, it, it, it allowed me to uh, go on in academics a little further. Uh, I did very well there, actually. Uh, I was a cum laude major, mm -hmm. and uh, then I went to Williams College. I had applied to several colleges, uh, including Yale and, and Wesleyan and Williams. Got into them all, but I wanted to go to Williams because I really loved loved the campus, uh, academic opportunities, and the beauty of the environment in Western Massachusetts. And uh, I also played sports. Uh, in college as well as in high school. What sports were those? I played football, basketball. I ran track in high school and college. Wow. I did the same sports except I didn't run track and I also played some lacrosse. So I was fairly active. Also had many jobs in college. <laughs> I, I was a scholarship student and uh, I uh, worked as a waiter and then eventually as a head waiter and I uh, had several jobs. In fact, my senior year, I think I had four different jobs that I had along with, uh, with my regular uh, academic work and sports. So I was pretty active. And you were involved with nutrition pretty early on then? No, I was not involved in nutrition you except for the food service. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, I really wasn't uh, terribly appreciative of nutrition or public health until I went beyond into graduate work. And when I went into graduate studies, uh, I had taken uh, pre-med courses in college, but I majored in history, so I had a pretty broad background. Uh, but I took all these pre-med courses, and they uh, allowed me to become, gain a, an appreciation of both medicine and public health. And uh, public health wasn't, wasn't so obvious uh, as an academic career offering when I was in college, though. It was uh, more of something a little bit far off, in a sense. But uh, when I did go to graduate school, I, I did gain, a, uh, as a doctoral program, I gained a much better appreciation of public health and nutrition. Let me back up a minute. So where in Canada were your parents from? My parents were from Ontario. My father lived in Kingston, Ontario, and mm -hmm. my mother in Belleville. They're both on Lake Ontario. Well, really, Belleville's on, on, a, on not on a lake so much as it is a, a component of, of, of Lake uh, Ontario. It's really a, a, another part of the water, so to speak. <laughs> and did you go back there when you were very young? When, when we were young, we used to go back uh, pretty much every summer for a number of years. So I got to know uh, my Canadian cousins. I have a, quite a few Canadian cousins and relatives and got to know some of them over the years and still friendly with uh, many of them actually. 
and uh, we, we really liked Canada. But we didn't go up there in the winter. We were only up there in the summer <laughs> and when everything was wonderful and the lakes were gorgeous and so on. If you were in Cleveland, then that's pretty cold in the winter too. Cleveland gets cold and, and nasty because of the lake water uh, mm -hmm. and, and snow and sleep. I can remember many bad, bad storms in Cleveland, mm -hmm. actually. So what did your parents do? My father was a bank uh, clerk, actually, a bank teller, and worked in uh, the banking business for, throughout his career. My mother was unemployed until World War II. During World War II, she worked in a factory in Cleveland for three years on the swing shift, that is from about 3 o'clock to 11 o'clock at night. So I didn't see her very much for three years during World War II, and I was like a latchkey kid. I'd come home from school and and uh, probably do homework and, and, and maybe play some, and then I helped her prepare the meals. So I did get involved with uh, meals <laughs> very early, and I can remember very clearly uh, peeling potatoes, cutting up cabbage, and having uh, other things like spam. Uh, we didn't have much meat, we didn't have much eggs or, or, or milk, but we had some of everything. And I hate spam to this day. <laughs> And, and, and also there's another vegetable or two that I don't like because of those days. They were tough times, actually. Yes. And uh, it was That was rationing, right? Oh, we had rations. I did a lot of shopping as well, so I had to take the, the stamps with me and get what, what we could get. There wasn't a lot available uh, during mm -hmm. World War II. And uh, we did have one car, but we didn't use it very much. Uh, I didn't drive at that time, anyhow. Mm -hmm. So, I, I didn't, what year were you born? I was born in 1934. 34. And then you graduated from high school in? 52. 52. Uh-huh. Yes. And in the summers, I always had jobs working. Uh, when I was younger, I worked in, as a caddy in a golf course, or several golf courses, really, but one, one in particular. And in 1946, I carried a bag in the United States Golf Championship, the Open, it was held at Canterbury Country Club in Cleveland, and uh, I, had my, I was able to go round two, two rounds with my, my man, and uh, he didn't make it any further, so I got to go in free with my ticket, my badge or whatever, and uh, got to see the rest of the tournament. Wow. Which was very interesting. Right after World War II, it hadn't been played since 1940, actually. So it wow. was very, very, very well received, and and uh, was a very interesting early highlight for me. Mm -hmm. So that was, uh, and then and then when I was older, at 16, I, I worked in factories in Cleveland, several different kinds of construction factories uh, uh, of structural steel, and uh, then in in a factory where they made engines for uh, jet aircraft. Wow. This is fascinating. I have no idea, even though all those G-bus rides we've taken together. <laughs> I don't think I've ever asked you these questions. That's, that's interesting. Well, I did a lot of things in order to make a little bit of money. I helped my brother in college, and then I had a little bit of money saved myself when I went to college. Not much, but a little. So your brother was older than you? Yes. He went, he went to Wesleyan in Connecticut right after World War II, and uh, he needed a lot of help financially. He did have a scholarship, but he still needed help. Mm -hmm. And so is he your only sibling? Yes. Mm -hmm. and what is he doing now? He's deceased. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. He, he, he was, he acted, actually, uh, wanted to go on to become a, uh, a PhD in uh, history. And he started a graduate program at Western Reserve University before it became part of Case at Western mm -hmm. Reserve University. And uh, he started there, and then he was uh, drafted in the military. And so that ended his academic career, actually. And when he finished, he worked in New Jersey. So I didn't see him very much. I didn't really know him so well later on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So, so you went to Williams and you majored in history, yes. which you did pre-med also. Yes. And you worked in various visit jobs, including waiting mm -hmm. and head waiter, and and then you went to a graduate program. Uh, yes. At, yes. At, where? Yes, I did. I got a, a master arts and teaching degree from Harvard University School of Education, and uh, that was uh, very interesting. And I went from there to a public school in Portland, Maine, where I taught one year and coached sports also. And I taught, I taught uh, uh, some physics and uh, some chemistry. And uh, a history major. Yes. <laughs> well, I taken. You taken enough the courses uh -huh. to have a fairly good background. Uh, but I, I, I found that teaching at that level wasn't very stimulating and that I, if I were going to do anything much, I needed to go beyond. So I had the opportunity to go to a junior college and teach at a junior college in Massachusetts for uh, three years. And while I was there, I got a master's degree in, in uh, biology, really mostly chemistry, biology, biological chemistry, actually. Uh, at Boston University, and I, I did that over a three-year period, and I'd have to commute into Boston to do that at, wow. at nights and in the summer. Wow! It was it was yeah it was a uh, a program I'm not sure they still offer, but it was wonderful. I had a lot of very good professors, and it was uh, really opened me up my eyes up more about biochemistry. So then I went to Cornell University on a on a fellowship, a very nice fellowship. Was it NSF? It was. Uh, it was uh, NIH actually. NIH. Mm -hmm. It was uh, sponsored by the National Institute of Dental Research, mm -hmm. uh, and it and allowed me to have four years of really a wonderful university education. So I took a lot. Took biochemistry. That was my field, and took a lot of other related courses in the biological field at, at, at the advanced level. And what years were those? 62 to 66. Mm -hmm. I finished finished in 66, and my first teaching job then was at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. I taught there for for uh, five years, and then I had the visiting professorship at UNC one year. I was still actually on the faculty. And so Illinois. that was 66 to 71. Yes. You were mm -hmm. on the faculty at U U uh, University of Illinois Urbana, correct? Mm -hmm. But you, that last year, you spent as a visiting faculty member here. Yeah, the year of seventy one, seventy two. I spent. I had an opportunity to come here and uh, work with a professor in orthopedics, and uh, it was a really great opportunity. It got me into another area of research that allowed me to plow ahead, as you might say, and, and go on. So. I did that when I came into public health the following year, year starting in in the uh, fall uh, summer of 1972. Uh, one of my first jobs in the Department of, of Nutrition was to be a head of a course for the whole School of Public Health called called uh, Pub 100. Pub 100, which was an introduction to public health and it involved a lot of faculty. You Not were in me. charge of Pub 100? For three years. I in 1972, charge. fall 72? 72 to 75. And then the course was dropped from the curriculum. Yeah. Because it was kind of a, a hodgepodge, a cafeteria-style course in which many, <laughs> many uh, topics were covered, and they were covered very well by the faculty. It was wonderful. I had faculty involved from everywhere. But it wasn't so considered so important. How did I not remember this? I don't know, but your wife was in there. I no, think. so was I. Oh, you were. That's where we met. I'll be darned. <laughs> well, no, you, it's true. I didn't. Well, think. you may have you may have taken it under a different person. Well, uh, it was Pub 100. It was taught in Rosenau Auditorium. Yes. And it was fall 1972. <laughs> yes. And there was a different. There was a procession of speakers. Yes. Yes. And uh, I admit I didn't go to all the lectures. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that was part of the issue, and I think a lot of students didn't feel it was so helpful to their careers. Um, so, yeah, I can't comment on that. I wasn't as serious a student then as I should uh -huh, have been. Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, it had some good good things. I certainly did gain a lot from it, and not just my wife. But yeah. 
also other things. Yeah. And you had the small groups. That we small did. Discussion we broke it up into small groups also. That's correct. And, it was, uh, and, and the students had to write a paper. I don't remember a paper. Okay. <laughs> well, how did I miss that? <laughs> I don't know. You, you, if you, I don't, I don't recall that you were actually in that because the, the course was taught the year before or several years before by the same man. He, uh, he was from health policy. That's actually who I sort of remember yes. teaching him. He he talked about the elephants and the butterflies and things like that. I don't know if you know that. I know about elephants and butterflies, but that was Tacky Christ. Well, he was a visiting professor in that course. He wasn't the main professor. The main professor was a, another man. Um, I should have looked this up because... Uh, John somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I should have looked that up. I, so apparently I didn't take your version of the course, but no, you are, are you sure it was fall 72 that you taught it? Because, well, it's possible it was fall 73. I wonder and, if that's possible. 73, 74, and 75. I, that's probably correct. Uh, maybe I should check that, because I, yeah. I really don't think I would have not come to your course. Yeah, I, I, th <laughs> I think you're right. I think you're right. I, I, I must have replaced him after he had stepped down in that. Yeah. Those are very hard courses to teach, I think, and well, they are. they're hard to staff because they don't really work for your research. Yeah, and the faculty, I don't think, totally were supportive of it yeah. because it, uh, it took away from the major focus for students, especially doctoral students, uh, but also master's students. Mm -hmm. So that course uh, didn't last and it was probably a good, a good Yes, actually. Oh, I don't know. I would, I'm yeah. not ready to say that. Yeah. Well, I think it. it I think it uh, had, had gone beyond its utility, and so now there are different courses. Now we have environmental sciences, one whole course for students, as well as the other basic science courses like biostatistics. Yeah, even those are being. I mean, it's all being reconfigured now with this mm -hmm. new MPH. You know. Yeah. No, I didn't know that. Before. Oh yeah, the whole thing is unrecognizable. Mm -hmm. uh, it's from CEEF has been promoting this and yeah CEEF CEPH CEPH yeah uh, their public health is really an extremely broad discipline and so it's hard to fit everything in and but I think the most important things are getting the fundamentals and uh, the fundamental courses in biostatistics and epidemiology are certainly very well taught uh, but. I, I think students probably need a little bit more than that because most of most of this field now is very quantitative. Every discipline is quantitative, including behavioral science. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a big big factor, I think, in, in, in the preparation of students. They need to have strong science, math, science background. Yeah, but I agree with you. It's a lot broader, and mm -hmm. it's important that they have that knowledge too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, they need us. But it's hard to give a smattering of this and a smattering of that because you don't do justice to it. That's, that's one of the issues. Like in nutrition, for example, we've never had nutrition as a major fundamental course in public health. Mm -hmm. But yet it's so critical for general health aspects for everything. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, people don't know that you're supposed to have a lot of vegetables and fruits because they're the best fundamental foods for, for living. And, uh, you can have meats and other other things in reasonable amounts, but you've got to have plenty of fruits and vegetables. That's that's such an important key, and very few people get that, even in public health. Well, we'll be sure that this segment is going to be put up there on YouTube by itself, so people can read that they're supposed to, or can can hear that they're supposed to eat their yeah. fruits and vegetables. Okay. Let me ask you anything else from the '70s that sticks out in your mind, the things that you were involved in. Well, the '70s. The school was running under Bernie Greenberg, who was a wonderful dean. He, he was a superb dean. He had contact with everybody. He wanted to have his hands on everything and uh, making sure things went well. And he was he was very supportive of the faculty. Uh, our current dean, Dr. Reimer, is is similar. She's also very supportive of the faculty in many ways. And, and, uh, so I think that we've been lucky to have those two really outstanding deans. Uh, in between, we've had other deans who obviously functioned well 
uh, Dr. Roper, for example, has done a lot. He added on a, a new uh, a new public health program, doctoral program for students, which is more of a general type of program. 